Hey art friends, it's me Rob from Art Next, and I'm excited today we're drawing a rose. I hope you're excited too. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Now this lesson is more advanced, so it's meant for older kids and even adults. Now remember, if I ever go too fast, you can always pause the video. In this lesson, I'm using Prismacolor colored pencils to draw with. We're gonna draw the basic shapes first, kind of outline everything. Then I'm also using my biannual alcohol-based markers to color with, and we also have marker paper, Canson marker paper to draw on. If you don't have the same art supplies, don't worry. You can use whatever you have at home and just follow along, practice drawing with me. If you want to purchase the same art supplies that I have, be sure to check the link in the description below this video. You can head over to Amazon and purchase it from our Amazon store. Okay, let's get started. I'm using a red colored pencil, Scarlet Lake, to draw the main or basic shapes of our rose first. I'm gonna draw kind of big here in the middle of the paper, and I'm gonna start by drawing a circle. Now this is just kind of to get the base of the rose. We're drawing it kind of closed up to not completely open. In the middle of the rose, let's draw it like tipped a little bit. Then about here, we're gonna draw a little oval for the center of our rose. Now let's draw a bigger oval around this one. This is the center. This is the outside shape. Then we're gonna come down from the outside of this oval and we're gonna connect it. So we're gonna draw an S curve that comes down and then out and connects to the larger circle here. And we can do the same thing on this side. Down and then come out to the bigger circle. I love using these basic shapes and combining them to make a more complicated shape. Okay, now let's start drawing the petals and adding more detail. So let's start on the outside. We're gonna draw a petal that starts up here. We're gonna come around and then we're gonna S curve down this and then S curve again and we'll come past the base of our rose down here. Let's also draw this petal kind of curving around or you can see kind of it like this. You can see it peeling away from the main shape. So this is the first petal it comes up like this and then it's going to come around. We can also add a few little wavy lines because they're not perfectly smooth some ripples in the petal. Also around here, let's draw it coming out like this. We can add another one in here. And this, let's have it cross over and have the petal coming down on the other side. One of the cool things too about art is you don't have to make it look exactly like me. I hope you're taking time to add de different details. You can also change it. Don't worry about trying to make it look exactly like mine. Now we're ready to move on to the next layer of petals. And we're really trying to get those petals to wrap around this cylinder shape running through our rows. Let's start over here. We're gonna draw a kind of a wiggly wavy line that comes around to make that petal look natural. And we're gonna add a few more waves coming down this way. And I'm pressing firm and heavy so that the lines show up more on the camera, but you can press lightly so that it doesn't show up as strong on your paper. So I'm gonna have this petal, it's wrapping around that cylinder shape and we're coming down and then we're gonna end right about here. We can also have the little edge of the petal, how it's turning or coming around this way. We're gonna also bend this petal around also and we can see the edge of it. So we can add a little extra line that comes through here. The edge of these petals, we can have them come in a little further so that there's a little space between the outside of this petal and the inside of the next one. Let's add another layer of petals. We're gonna draw another curve that comes out from the center. We're gonna come around and we can add a few waves to that line and we'll have it end in the same spot as that second one we drew inside here. Let's also have the little edge of the petal kind of curling around so that you can see it opening up and then we can also add, let's add another petal coming out of this one and maybe it, you don't see as much because it's behind all of the other ones, but it can end right here also. Now let's draw all of the petals that are inside, still kind of all curled up. So we're gonna draw the edge here. 
And then let's draw a one that comes around like this. We can also add another one, maybe inside that matches. And then here, we could draw the other side of the petal coming up from behind these petals. Now let's draw a petal coming around this way. So I'm gonna draw a bump coming up, maybe it waves, it wiggles and kind of comes around this way and then comes in and ends on this side. We can also maybe see some of that petal curling around too, right on the edge. And then let's have the edge of these petals coming down here. Oh, and on this side, see how we drew the edge of the petal coming in, comes down like this, and here's this. We could also have another edge coming in. Look how it's looking more three-dimensional because everything is overlapping each other. And then this line, let's draw it curving around and connecting here. And then I'm gonna darken in the bottom of the rose down here, the base of the rose. Then we can come back up here. I like jumping around too on the drawing. We can also draw the very center of our rose. Maybe it's just kind of an upside down V shape here. This is gonna come around like that. You could add even more petals if you wanted to. I think this is looking just right though. I'm gonna leave it just like this. Now let's switch to our green color pencil. I'm using apple green, and we're gonna have the stem come straight from the center line of the rose. So you can add that center line right there. And then you could draw a line for the left side of our stem and also a line for the right side. And that center line is going right through the center of the stem. Now let's draw the leaves. There are these smaller, they look like leaves. I think they're called sepals. I don't know all of the names, but I know, I know there are different specific names to different parts of the plant. But I, I think they're called sepals and it's the part of the leaf that covers up the bud when it's really small. So let's draw some of those. I'm gonna draw the center of these leaves coming out. I'm just gonna call them leaves to keep it simple. <laughs> We're gonna draw one curving out this way and then maybe we'll have another one coming this way and we can curve it to coming out like this. And then maybe another one right here. Maybe this one curves up too in front of the rose. That'll make it look more three-dimensional. That'll be cool. And then we can have another one coming out this way. We can have an S-curve this way and then maybe another one coming this way. Now let's draw the outside shape of these leaves and we can draw them with little zigzags in them too. So I'm gonna draw a little zigzag here, and have it coming up, and another zigzag, and then let's have it connect in to a point. And on this side, we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna draw it right next to the center line. I'll add the zigzags, and then into the point. Let's do the same thing for this leaf right here. Have it come out, little zigzag, and then curl into the point. And the same thing on the right side. And let's do that same thing over here on this one. A little zigzag and then a point. And then another zigzag and a point. Let's repeat that same step over here for this one. Come out, zigzag, another zigzag and into the point. Do the same thing for the other side. And then this one that's out in front, I'm gonna come out a little wider, have the zigzag in, and then it's gonna curve up like this and connect to that point. And then the same thing for the other side. And I'm just gonna have it come up like this. We'll just add this little curled point coming up like this. And then you have the other side over here. I'll darken this in so it's easier to see on the camera. You have it curling up. It looks really cool in front of the rose. We did it. Now let's switch to our markers. Let's first switch to our red marker. I'm using R107 if you have the same set. And this part I'll fast forward, but I'm going to color in the whole rose solid.
Now I'm switching to green, G515, and we'll color in all of the green shapes, the leaves and the, also the stem. Now that we have the main colors blocked in, let's add some shading and shadows. I'm switching to R338. This is a darker red. We're just blocking in some of the darker colors. So I'm gonna start over here on the inside layer right here, and we're gonna add this shadow. The nice thing about the, that dark red colored pencil, the first layer, is that you can barely see it. So it probably doesn't show up on the camera anymore, but it's still there. Hopefully you can see it on your drawing. But we're going to add this little shadow that comes down and then we're going to have it come out a little further. And then we'll also blend this shadow in uh, better and smoother with a colored pencil. But we're just blocking in the color first. So we're going to add this shadow on top. This is the nice thing about these alcohol based markers is you can layer them on top of each other and get really cool effects. So we're going to just follow that shape, the inside shape of that petal, the first one. There can also be a little shadow on this edge. You can start to see, I'm gonna block that in too. And then also on this side, let's add a little shadow coming down. Let's add shadows on the next layer of petals. I'm gonna add it right here, following all of the colored pencil lines that we just added and maybe even color all the way to the other petal that's just above it. And I'm gonna add a block of shadow here on this side. And also inside of the center. Now I'm switching to a dark red. It's almost a brown color. It's called Crimson Lake. And I'm gonna start over here on the left side and we're gonna blend or shade the marker and smooth it into the red. So I'm gonna start here, press really firmly against the marker and then get lighter as we come away from the marker. So see how that adds a nice gradation? So that shading looks a little more realistic. And I'm gonna do the same thing with this shadow. Press firmly next to the marker and then gradually get lighter as you get further away from the marker. And then also I'm gonna add more shading underneath the rose down here. Then I'm going to gradually blend this shadow on the right side so it has a natural gradation to it also. During the lesson, I'll fast forward some of these parts. So remember to pause the video and take time to add these shadows and extra details into your drawing. These first petals are looking a lot more realistic now. I hope you're having fun following along with me. I've added a little more shading under this first inside petal. And now I wanna switch, just for a little bit, we're gonna to switch to our white color pencil. And we're gonna add a few highlights, on, especially on these outside, two outside petals right here. So here, let's start right up here at the top. I'm gonna to draw this little line that connects here. And we're gonna add just a small 
press super lightly. And we're going to add a little highlight on this outside petal. And as it comes down, so up here at the top, I'm pressing a little more firm, but as I come down to the shadow, I'm going to get lighter and lighter. And then let's do the same thing on the right side. I'm going to start up here, we'll kind of connect the pedal to the outside edge. And then as we come down, I'll press lighter and lighter. You can also add little highlights on each of these little wavy lines for where it ripples. Now let's do the same thing with all of the other petals. I'm using the Crimson Lake to add shading, and then we'll use the white colored pencil to add a few more highlights. I'm gonna start up here and just trace over some of those first lines, guidelines that we created in the very beginning, just so you can see them a little better. Hopefully you can see those lines a little bit better now. I'm gonna add shading up against those lines and then fade out as I get to the edge of the petal. So we'll start dark here and then get lighter towards the top, all the way around this top edge. And then we'll come down to the next layer. So this line here, I'm gonna start and do the same thing. We'll start dark next to it and then get lighter towards the edge. And then the same thing with the next layer of petals. And we have some of that marker shading in there. So I'm gonna gradate and blend those shapes too. I'm gonna also add a little shadow right here on this one, There's some shading. We'll start dark on the pencil line. And then as we go up, we get lighter and lighter press lightly as we move up. Our rose is really starting to come together and it's looking super realistic and three-dimensional. Now let's switch back to our white color pencil and add a few more highlights. I want to start up here and add them on this edge of the petal. And this part, it really helps to keep your pencil sharp so that you can create those details. Add it on the next layer too. You can add these highlights if you're imagining the light shining down from the top left. You can imagine where these highlights would touch on each petal. With the colored pencils, my hand will smear it and that red will drag over into the white part of your paper. Now you can have a scratch piece of paper down to protect it, or you can use an eraser at the end and just clean it up. I have this kneaded eraser. These are fun to use because you can stretch them and, and uh, use them for a long time. You can also use a gum eraser. Sometimes that works better. But I'm just gonna go in and clean this up a little bit. Now I'm switching to my black colored pencil to add more contrast or darker shadows to give it even more three dimension. So I'm going to start here, right here where the two petals come together and create this really deep shadow. And then maybe down here also at the very bottom.
I'm gonna leave the rows just like this. You can pause the video right now to match some of those areas where I added the black colored pencil. Now I'm switching to a dark green. This is called kelp green. And I'm using this to add some shading into the sepals or the small leaves that are just at the base of the rows. I'm gonna first color in that center line, the first line that we started with so that you can see it. Add that on each one. It can be thicker and darker towards the rows and then thinner as it comes out to the point. So instead of just drawing a solid line all the way from the base out to the point, you can start with it darker here and thicker. And then as it comes out, it gets lighter and thinner towards the point until it just fades out. And then the same thing on this one that is curling and coming towards us. Draw that coming down underneath and then the center coming this way. Now let's add shading at the base of each of these small leaves. So here we're pressing firm so it's nice and dark. And then as we come out to the edge, we're getting lighter and fading out. With the stem, we forgot to add a few thorns. So we'll be using the fine tip on my green marker, the G515. Add a little thorn coming out of the stem, and we could also add another one on the other side. There we go. Now, now it looks more like a rose. <laughs> and then I'm switching back to this dark green colored pencil. We're gonna add shading on the right side. Start dark underneath the sepal. And then we'll get lighter coming down, but we're still adding shadow all the way down the stem. And then we can add a dark shadow underneath the thorn. We can repeat the same step that we did for the petals, switch to our black colored pencil to add darker contrast in the shadows and make this area even deeper. With colored pencils, sometimes I like the texture of the colored pencil. Sometimes I want it to look really smooth. The one trick you can do is you can go back over it with the same color or the first color, the base. In this case, I used apple green was the first color and it matched the markers. So I'm going back over the darker colored pencil, pressing really firm, and this smooths out that texture to make it look softer. And that's it, we did it. We finished drawing and coloring our rows. It turned out amazing, and I'm sure your drawings turned out perfect too. I hope you didn't worry too much about making your drawing look exactly like mine. The most important thing is to have fun and to practice. I promise, if you do this lesson all over again a second time, it'll turn out even better than the first time. Also, another thing I want to do is challenge you. Save the drawing that you did today, put it away, 
and then come back even a month from now and do the same lesson. Then pull out that first drawing you did and compare it to the second one. And I promise you'll see a huge improvement just from practicing over one month. Again, I hope you had a lot of fun and we'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.